just say very quickly before yeah. you go on, you you brought up the debate. You're talking about 9 11. Um, Kamala Harris said that January 6th was the worst tragedy this country has seen since the Civil War. Yeah. So hmm. no 9 11, no Pearl Harbor. Mm-hmm. Jan 6, January 6. Wow. A day before, nonetheless. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome back to Black and Blurred. Hi. That's Darren. That's me. I'm Brandon. Darren's back, y'all. Mm. I think it's only been one episode. One so episode. Oh, yeah. but I've done videos. I did videos because I had to respond. Cameras. I had to respond to uh, Doreen and yeah. Marsha. And, and I never sent you that video, did I? The two hour one? Yeah. Did you watch it? It's on YouTube, right? Oh, oh did you yeah, see some of it? Yeah, I saw, yeah, I saw. yeah it's, it's a tough, it's a tough watch. Now, now. You know, we were just talking about this and we're going to talk about this a little bit more with our guests today. But can you imagine what those conversations are morphing into on those videos? The conversations around the video? Yeah. So 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 maybe not the first one. I think there's been a lot of positive feedback on the first one, the, mm-hmm. the two hour one that me and Adam did. Adam. Came. Oh, OK. Right. Yeah. Um, but I actually did a new video responding to an Elisa Childress podcast, which is a very good episode that she did with Doreen Virtue. But Elisa asked Doreen about first Samuel 28 and she said hey is do you think that's Samuel that comes um and in short Doreen says no I think it's a demon and so I did a response to that uh, because it the in the Hebrew it says I see an Elohim mm. coming out so and, and that needs to be flushed out we know it's not a demon yeah um my stance is that it's Samuel and it's not Samuel because the witch got lucky it's Samuel because God said hey, go go give him um this last judgment <laughs> that's why <laughs> that's why but uh, so, yeah, that video, mm-hmm. the comment section is turning into people more so like men and, and, and boyish men who are mad at me for not being more angry about Doreen. Yeah. More that's, angry. Interesting. Yeah, it's interesting. It's interesting. But that's where we are today. We're in this very just vile and violent thinking society to the point where even christians in the name of christianity people want a video like that to come out because they think it's wrong that doreen did is doing what she's doing against michael heiser Mm -hmm. and so for the banner of our lord and savior jesus christ they'd love for me to really just smother her face in the dirt in jesus name that's where we are i don't guys today's 9 11 Mm -hmm. It is a quintessential day for you to shut up and mind your business. Yeah, yeah. Isn't that something? This is a day that the, the more information has come out uh, about 9 11. I mean, you know what I mean? Like technology yeah. has evolved. It People has. are digging into some receipts. It has. We don't do the remember thing anymore. It has. They might, you might have like a black person saying, lift every voice and saying on, on Sunday <laughs> before the football game. That's about it. That's about it. That's about have a plane fly over and yeah. just some American flag and the end. Meanwhile, as we've talked about a lot on this podcast, um, if you have an idea on how evil the world is, chances you're wrong, Mm. that it's far greater. But Jesus is that much more majestic and glorious and victorious. Mm -hmm. But we're going to talk about it. We're going to talk about a little bit about 9-11, and we're going to talk more about just this dark generation, this dark age that we're under. And we have a sister in the Lord with us. Her podcast is called Eyes on the Right. Now, here's an interesting thing. Her Instagram is Eyes on the Right 4.0. Now, I didn't have an ask her this yet. <laughs> I don't know how many times have you but been? But I wonder, <laughs> I wonder, is it four? Because <sighs> it's been shadow banned that many times. But we'll find out. We have Amy from <laughs> Eyes on the Right joining Black and Blur. Amy, welcome to Black and Blur. Hey, guys. Thanks for having me. (laughs) I was laughing there in the green room. (laughs) (laughs) I just thought about that. I was thinking about your Instagram tag, and I'm like, wait a second. 4.0. Have you been shut down four or three times? Yes. Yes, I have, as a matter of fact. You answered the right question. I mean, you made the – you had the right answer for that question. Yeah, Yeah, definitely. Yep, yep, four times. Um, It really – I started my page about seven ish years ago and there was a time of that high censoring. I think it was around 2016 and I was just posting mm-hmm. stuff. They didn't like, yeah. so, you know, yeah, here you and are. So it goes. 
Here well, I four, am. Four, you know what they say, fourth time's a charm. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you so know far, a, so good. <laughs> what's a crazy feat? Let me let me pull you up here. I haven't even done these things because I I've I stumbled upon your podcast. Um, and so that's where my vetting was done, where I'm like, I love your heart for the Lord. I love, therefore, your subsequent heart for the truth. Um, yeah. And I wouldn't say subsequent because the truth is a person. Correct. It is the Lord. Mm -hmm. um, and so I didn't even look on your profile for your Instagram. But you four, four iterations later, you're at 134,000 followers. Yeah. I Listen, guess. Look at that. That's <laughs> that well, it, it means that people are thirsty for the truth. Yeah. And, yeah. and you deliver it on your podcast, you deliver it on your page, and when it comes down to things that are speculative, you're sure to let people know, hey, this is speculative, but there's some evidence you should look into yeah. <laughs> regarding this, mm -hmm. which I appreciate. But don't let me tell the whole story. Tell the people a little bit about yourself, how you started with this podcast. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, yeah. Um, so the podcast I started recently, it's only, I think it's about a year old, but I started my page, oh, wow. like I said, like, yeah, seven or eight years ago, long story short, I lived in LA. Um, and I grew up in California. And so I kind of was near the Hollywood stuff. You kind of naturally see that kind of stuff around there. And just like everybody, you're kind of fascinated with it. And so those were kind of just integrated into my kind of world, you know, view my lens. And mm. as a Christian, I was a little lukewarm at the time, but, um, I kind of had this change in my life and the Lord just, I rededicated my life to the Lord and he just started to download all this stuff. I got sober. And so my eyes just opened up mm. Mm. and I just started posting things that I was seeing, um, things that I was learning and it just grew. And then I've refined it a little bit over the years and really tried to allow the Lord to lead. But I realized there was a, a niche in this, in the sense of, like you said, people want to know, they want to know it, it. It's fascinating. You know, it kind of like, yeah. it, it makes you wonder, like, could this be real? Is this real? And I found that if I could get an in with some people that may have never heard about Jesus Christ, that I would try and do it this way. And so I was so limited in my scope on Instagram being censored, et cetera. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to start a podcast. And so yeah. that's where the podcast came in. I can extrapolate a little bit more on my thoughts and understanding behind it and hopefully give some people just some seeds in their heart, you know, mm. to want to come to know the Lord. So that's a short yeah. answer. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Thank you for sharing that. You know, yeah. what's very interesting about like, the groups that are media um, <laughs> defund the media. Mm -hmm. but, I like um, that. I need one of those. Our, our media and uh, you know the the powers that be, the groups that they create, um, they create ahead of time. So one conspiracy theory, conspiracy theorist, mm -hmm. uh, CIA creates this kind of group so that whenever anybody says something that ought to belong to the group, they can dismiss you and mm -hmm. throw you into the group. I bring that up to say that you have the quote unquote kooks that society will call a kook, Alex Jones, yeah. like a kook, um, before Alex Jones was um, Bill, Bill Cooper. Yeah. You're familiar oh, yeah. with Bill? Yeah. Bill William Cooper. Cooper. William Pale Cooper. Horse. That's yeah. right. Um, and a lot of people listening probably don't even, don't even know that name, really. You should look into him. <clears throat> Um, and so they think that all of their followers are the kooks. Meanwhile, you could be someone who comes to the Lord and just has a thirst for the truth yeah, and don't even know anything about that prior <laughs> to your coming to the Lord. Yeah. But here you are exposing truth and you immediately get thrown into the box as kook. Mm -hmm. Was that how it was for you? What was it like to come to the Lord? You have sober uh, sobered up you now have a sober mind a transformed heart and a renewed mind and you're thinking differently about things what was the reception um not very good at first <laughs> <laughs> i was called all of the above and yeah. hmm. for someone who you know was starting to work on some of my issues i was masking with alcohol i it was hard. I was thin skinned and I really had to seek out some of those deeper rooted things in myself with the Lord. And mm. I had this page to kind of help me work on some of those things because I was getting some stuff, some tough critics, you know, mm. but I knew there was, I knew that 
I was speaking what God wanted me to speak. So it was like, although it kind of stung a little bit, I knew that this is what I needed to do. So yeah. yeah. Mm. Mm -hmm. Um, what was, uh, did Thanksgiving change at all? What's that? I said, did Thanksgiving dinner change at all? Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> a lot changed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot changed. Yep. But you know, what's interesting, Amy, is that we were just talking before we started recording once upon a time, those things were fringe, right? And, and I want mm -hmm. you to share on some of the things that you have found as you have researched nine 11 over the years. And we've talked a little bit about it on our podcast, but they, they were things that you have to like go elsewhere and talk about, Hey guys, we're going to pause on Wednesday and let's talk about September 11th, 2001, right? Mm -hmm. Let's, let's talk about that. But today we're inundated with story after story after story that's happening in real time that people are telling you aren't happening and they immediately become friends. Like I was just telling you, <clears throat> Darren, I didn't watch the debate yesterday. Yeah. Um, but I, my my wife and I, we went to high school together and we found out that a high school classmate recently passed away. I logged on to Facebook mm -hmm. to try to get some information about it. And I started seeing people's feeds kind of like memeing Donald Trump talking about pets being stolen and eaten yeah. in different places. And I saw them memeing it. And I was like, oh, wait a second. Do they not know that that's actually happening? Like, do they do they think that it's just a joke or whatever or... Like it's right. actually happening, but our news cycle is, you always say it, it's so fast. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're hit with things on a day daily basis. Yeah. Um, and then being told to forget about it. Mm. <laughs> so it's tough. How do you keep up with what you mm. ought to share um, when? I mean, do you have like a specific thing that you stay <laughs> on path with? Or how do you know what you want to share? You're just keeping your eyes open to what needs to be shared yeah. in that moment. You know, that's such a good question because I remember there was a time when I was like, ah, oh, gotta keep up, you know, like, oh, and I think that first time I lost my page, if I had any little bit of pride about the number of people that followed me, it was mm -hmm. gone after that. I was like, God was like, oh, you are wow. not going to yeah. use this for numbers. Yeah. And I was like, okay, gotcha. And so, and so once I kind of let that go, like feeling the need to have to keep up and post two to three times a day and this mm. and that. Mm -hmm. Then I could just kind of be set free to just let the Lord lead. And so like, I don't post that much. I, I post, if I see something kind of spark my interest, God has given me that kind of puzzle brain where I put the things together really quickly and I just can kind of present it. And yeah. so I just wait on him and yeah. he shows me and, yeah. you know, sometimes he says, take that down <laughs> and I'm like, okay, mm. but, um, yeah, yeah. It, because it can really, just like you said, it is so quick yeah. that you forget about what you had just read the other day. And yeah. so, you know. Yeah, so. I mean, it's everywhere, too. They're not even really allowed to mourn. I mean, mm -hmm. there was just a shooting in Georgia. Yeah, right? at the high school. Where, where people, right? uh, yeah. people got killed. Mm -hmm. But now we're already memeing about Donald Trump and the yeah. debate. I mean, yeah. people have already forgotten. It's yeah, not been, you're right. <laughs> you're right. It's not a thing. Yeah. Yep. Well, uh, today is 9-11, <clears throat> and a part of our programmed forgetfulness is to remember that 9-11 is a day we're supposed to remember. Mm -hmm. I think that's the crux of it. Hey, remember that 9-11 is a day you're supposed to remember, and then that's it. That's it. Let, let's forget the eyewitness accounts that were pouring in in real time, uh, that people had video cameras back then. Mm -hmm. uh, people were recording. Uh, we have audio and vi what. Can I just say, very quickly, before yeah. you go on, you, you brought up the debate. You're talking about 9-11. Um, Kamala Harris said that January 6th was the worst tragedy this country has seen since the Civil War. Yeah. On the surface, police started throwing flashbang grenades and spraying mace. If somebody hit the World Trade Center, well, the, the, Trade Center. the World Trade, Trade Center. Center. Yeah. This just in, we're looking at the breaking news, very disturbing live shot here. That is the World Trade Center, and we just have unconfirmed reports of reporting to the explosion. As you come on, we have serious news of a major attack on the freeway now. This is how the jet done. This is how the jet done. Hey,
I live. I hope I live. She's coming down on me. Here it comes. I'm getting behind the car. So. Hmm. No 9-11. No Pearl Harbor. Jan 6. January 6. Wow. A day before, nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. Yeah. A day before 9-11. Yeah, that's right. Wow. Yeah. <clears throat> now, this is the society we're in. The things that we're about to talk about, people they, they exist in two categories. One, completely brand new. People have never heard about these things, or they're conditioned to think that's ridiculous. Yeah. Sure. And there, that's been a long time coming. There's a lot of work that goes into making people think that way. Um, when did your skepticism around what happened on September 11th start? And what were some findings <laughs> when, when, when that skepticism started? Ah, oh, that's a good question. I don't really remember. I just... I feel like there was a time when there was so much coming at me that I was mm. like, whoa, whoa, this, that, this, you know, Antarctica, Project Paperclip, MK Ultra. Yeah. Like, my mind <laughs> was right. going, that's... you guys agree? That you guys concur? Accurate. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So, so the timing of that, I don't really remember, but I remember watching this documentary. Tell me if you guys watched this. It was called Loose Change. Did you see that? I haven't seen I that. haven't seen that one. No. It's a good one. It's a good one. Okay. And I remember my husband and I were in a hotel room and, and it just randomly came on. It was probably like four or five years ago. Wow. And that was when I first kind of was like, hmm, whoa, wait a second. You know, around that time. Mm. And and then thus ensued just more people kind of writing sub stacks about it, like little videos here and there. And I just kind of like Put, started putting pieces together, little puzzle mm -hmm. pieces. And then I started to get into like the predictive programming end of it. So the Simpsons, the, yeah. you know, the media, all the things. And so, yeah. So I wanna, you can keep going. I mean, <laughs> I, okay. I, I want you to share some of the things that you have discovered over the years. So like you just went through yeah. predictive programming while you're talking, I want to pull up, I'm actually going to share it on screen. Cause I actually saw that right. earlier. Um, I'm going to pull up your page on what you're talking about. But yeah, share it with some people. Predictive okay. programming. Um, <laughs> yeah, what is it? What is it and why should they know about it? Oh, that's good. Um, so predictive programming, or, or you can call it priming, it's, it's an idea of putting a theme or a number or an idea out there to the public to prepare their minds subconsciously or consciously really to accept something that's going to be coming down the line. So for instance, 9-11, that's, that's my version of the definition. Um, mm -hmm. I'm sure, you know, online would have a different definition of that, but it's basically that, right? And so the priming of this is putting things out there to condition the mind to accept it and understand it when it comes. And mm. a lot of people believe that with the occult, Luciferianism, Satanism, you know, secret societies, that they have to do something called revelation of the method. And this is goes along with predictive programming. So they have to tell you what yeah. they're going to do. So you accept it. It's almost like a free will, self-will choice of saying, mm. oh, well, well, I accept that because they showed me. So the burden yeah. of, you know, um, the burden of, of what happens is taken off of them because they're like, well, we showed you, Yeah. Mm. you know? Yeah. So that's kind of the idea behind it, um, of why you would, why they do it. Um, mm -hmm. we can get more into the, they, but yeah. yeah. Did that answer your question? No, definitely. It definitely did. Okay. I, I think one of the more frustrating things for me is that people don't realize they're under this programming, um, mm -hmm or at least they're programmed to protect the programming when you can present with them something like let's I'm, I'm trying to find something that's fringy uh but it's right there you can show it oh uh, let's do dark night dark night there's this famous scene or there's a couple right in dark night you know yeah. night you have sandy hook mm -hmm. that's labeled on the map mm -hmm. random it's yeah. just so random yeah. right it's yeah. some small town in some some small town in connecticut yeah. what, what, what's it doing in the dark night and then you can have someone like yourself that puts the pieces together and says, hey, this is a part of predictive programming here, priming you for this thing. Um, and then the response is, no, that's not what it is. 
Sure. You're never provided with an alternative. Never. <laughs> Here's yeah. the reason why Sandy Hook is in the Dark Knight. That's right. located in Gotham City, a.k.a. New York. Right. Right. Yeah. But, yeah, that's frustrating because, you know, it's a, what is it, cognitive dissonance uh, is what people Boom. respond with. Exactly. Right. They respond with. Um, and, and yeah, go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Amy. Oh, I was just going to add into that. Yeah. Cognitive dissonance. And, you know, we've been so conditioned to just give, to just accept what is told of us, right? Like mm -hmm. even in school, I was a teacher for 21 years. It's all about rote learning. It's, it's really the idea of if you have a different idea or a thought about something that's really not, you know, nurtured, it's more of just a or B, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so you can see even in the school systems, how they started to kind of dumb down even the idea of questioning, but why, but, yeah. but why does it do that? Or, you know, so yeah, that's exactly right. That's even more so now. I mean, for yeah. sure, have mercy. Um, yeah. So the, they, uh, yeah, something that you mentioned, cause I know that's a deep rabbit hole. We've addressed a little bit of it. Before I say that, I, I and I thought I saw this. I thought I saw it on your page, but there was someone, and maybe it was our our friends over at Conspiracy Pilled, but um, there was something on all of the priming of 9-11 that's been throughout the years. You you mentioned the Simpsons and yeah, and what is that? That is a an episode where there was like a magazine or something like that with yeah. Um, it would. What was it? So I'm looking at it on my page right now, but yeah, okay. it's, it's Bart Simpson and he has this wad of money and you see this bus with the twin towers in the back and it says mm -hmm. nine, the dollar sign and nine. And then the, the towers are the 11. So mm. it's like $9 and then the towers are in the background of the picture with the 11. Yeah. Where um, is that? Um, on my page. Oh, I see it. Okay. Did you see I was it? Yeah. I was looking right at it. Let me share it. Let me share it yeah. for those who will watch this on YouTube for this to be inevitably taken down. No, <clears throat> <Aww. laughs> we don't <Is> care. <laughs> yeah. We, we, we don't care. <laughs> Get used to it guys. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, so yeah, you have, um, just talking about the priming here and this is important. Without making a mistake. Look at the letter at the end and remember the sound it makes. Get ready. Pipe. Yes, pipe. Get ready to read this word the fast way. Get ready. Key. Yes. Sound it out. Get ready. Key. Sound it out. Get ready. Key. What word? Key. Yes, kit. Boys and girls, sound this word out. Get ready. Steel. What word? Steel. Yes. Yeah. All right, we're not going to listen to the whole thing, but did you could you hear that, Amy? Yeah, I did. So explain to the people a little bit about that. You talked about that in your post, saying that he was Bill, uh, George Bush was reading "I Pet Goat" mm -hmm. or "I Pet the Goat" or "Pet the Goat," whatever that book is. Yeah, and and they were sounding out specific words. What were they? So yeah, so you see him there. He's sitting in the classroom. This is the mm -hmm. moment either before or during when the second plane hit the tower, second plane hit the tower. Mm -hmm. And so ironically, the kids are repeating after the teacher instructing them to say plane hit kite steel must. Mm -hmm. And so you see, I mean, what is the likelihood of them saying plane steel hit kite yeah. must? I The kite is a little different, but mm -hmm. so they're basically, you know, kind of, chanting what's actually going on at this time and then you yeah. see a man come in there's the letters or the words right there yeah. kite hit steel plane must and then you see the you know his whatever that works for bush comes in and whispers in his ear telling him it's finished or it's done you know yeah. whatever he says so it's just and you have some more yeah here. These, that to uh, me was a huge one mm-hmm yeah. Life beyond the boom. Yeah, that's so interesting. March. Right? This is in March of 2001, New York Magazine. It's about real estate that shows the twin towers mm -hmm. with the line with the tag life beyond the boom. Yikes. Right? And obviously you have the favorite yeah, done, here, yeah, fan my, favorite. <laughs> And, and you know what's interesting that even with people seeing this with their eyes, they said, that's crazy. Right. I that's know. all a coincidence. Right? It's all a coincidence. That's crazy. Hmm. 
Right. Uh, G.I. Joe, yeah. Planes flying at the Twin Towers, 1985. Die Hard, 90, uh, 88. Bruce Willis, man. He's sick. That's sad. Mm. This ad, I mean, all of these things are prior to the event. Yeah. Prior to the event. September 11th in the Matrix. And there's the one you were talking about. Yeah. The Simpsons. I mean, the Simpsons have, I mean, they're they're batting 2,000. Yeah, they, they are. The Simpsons don't miss. They've been at it for some time. No. Yeah, the, Simpsons, the Simpsons don't miss. Uh, but I guess that's the point, right? That's It's not meant yeah. to miss. Right. 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 <clears throat> and so now here we are in 2024. And, you know, whenever I get frustrated, I'm not thinking about the world per se. I'm thinking about the church uh, and how ostracized you can be as a Christian who cares about sharing the truth as a believer, mm. saying this is actually connected to our faith that Ephesians 5:11 that, hey, I don't want to have any partnership with darkness. And I also don't want to sit on the fence. I want to expose the darkness. That Christians will look at you and say, that's crazy. Mm. That's crazy. Yet here we are. What are some predictive programming as we're running, we're running low on time? What is some predictive programming that we've been seeing as of late? Mm. Oh, my gosh. Well, let me think for a little bit. Oh, mm -hmm. so and this and this obviously is kind of my opinion. So you guys take it with a grain of salt, um, test it, you know, we're just kind of talking freely here, but yeah. I've actually seen a lot of civil war programming. Um, a yeah. lot of, we priming. were just talking about that. Absolutely. Yeah. You were? We were, right? don't continue. <laughs> wow. So it's meant to be. Yeah. So, so you had that movie come out in April. Um, I'm trying to think I've done a, a, a quite a few posts on it and a couple podcasts, but a lot at, in the state of Texas, a lot mm -hmm. has been on an emphasis in Texas. And mm -hmm. I'm not really sure why I don't have all the answers there. But, you know, you had that double eclipse go, go across. Um, you had the border stuff. So you have all this leading up to this election, this big mm -hmm. election. And I really believe just based on my research and just kind of an innate feeling that, you know, they want a civil war. They want yeah. something to cause an chaos so they can then bring order that is their right. mantra order out of chaos um these people these leaders these political leaders and evil you know people in the world this, because yeah. they they benefit from more not only financially but also um to bring about their agendas and their plan yeah so no yeah, civil war definitely that is you, you i mean it could be our opinion but it's a shared one uh yeah. it is definitely a shared one because you the, the title of the movie civil war just First of all, these movies aren't really great. It seems like they're just there to they're be a little there. thriller. Yeah, correct. Yeah, they're just there to send the message. <laughs> yeah. yeah, great point. Mm -hmm. Um, but then you have the Netflix movie. I keep forgetting the name of it. With uh, leave the world behind. We'll leave yeah, the world right. behind. That's right. That leave was a big one. Behind. And then there were some. There were two other films that I just happened to watch with my wife. And the backdrop of the movie was bait rooted in civil war. So it's kind of like leave the world behind where in our face is this drama happening in a household, but the backdrop is their civil war. And there was one like in the shadow of the moon or something like that, hmm. where they were trying to prevent a civil war, but it's all rooted in far right individuals. They're trying to go back in time and kill far right individuals to prevent hmm. a, a terrible atro uh, atrocities. And there was another, but it was just, all over the place civil war civil war no. um the only other things i would say right now i have zero answer because i haven't watched them and i don't know what the connection is but i thought it was interesting only because my brain where i'm sure your brain works this way too there is a uh vince vaughn tv show i think what's a, uh, oh. it's a vince vaughn series bad monkey bad monkey All right yeah but then there's also a martial arts movie called monkey man yeah. And then there was a there was something else with a monkey hmm. that I forgot. And I'm thinking, what is that about? Is that potentially connected to anything? Or have you looked into that at all? Yeah. So are you are you kind of <laughs> that's funny. Of course that? I have. Yeah, that's crazy. Oh, Brandon. Yeah. <laughs> what was the movie with uh that 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 uh 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 man Jordan Peele did with Daniel Kalua? 
that thing was that move was weird, but it was centered on some monkey that killed a bunch of people. Uh, or Jordan Peele. Yeah, it was a weird movie. Oh, uh, with the girl. Yeah, what's her name? Uh, what is Kiki that? Palmer? Kiki Palmer. What was that movie? It was very odd. I can't. It was tell like, I can't nope. Yeah, yeah, nope. It was called nope. No, it was called nope. What a terrible title. Terrible. Yeah. <laughs> and it had, That's why it you forgot around, it. Yeah, it was centered around a monkey that. Uh, well, it was centered around an alien, but, but yeah, the for story. some reason the monkey was there. Yeah, right. That's true. It doesn't. It doesn't even make sense. It's not cohesive. Yeah. <laughs> so oh, what have man. you been finding in this, and and where does it stretch? Does it stay at the movies or? Have you seen it elsewhere? It's really strange. You guys ready for this? <laughs> <laughs> yes. Okay. So it takes us back to Texas and Lord Hanuman, which is a, you know, Hindu God, um, mm -hmm. was erected in Sugarland or uh, Texas. <laughs> Can't remember. A statue. That. Sugar Land. A statue, 90 foot statue, which ironically is the same wow. height as um, the statue of Nebuchadnezzar. Oh, Nebuchadnezzar. And yeah. And so it's the third statue, third largest statue. But the crazy parts are that Vince Vaughn show I was just talking about, um, Bad Monkey, mm -hmm. was released the same day that Monkey Pox was declared, um, Monkey you know, Pox. that was yeah. a threat. OK. And when I started to research this stuff, it was like, oh, my gosh, it's everywhere. So. Mm -hmm. So, of course, the Hindu ties into Kamala because her name is, you know, means um, lotus, lotus flower or something. Yeah, that's right. Right. And the lotus is very revered, not only in the Hindu religion, but also just in, in the occult in Egyptian mystery religions, right. etc. Mm, yeah. um, and so you've got that kind of deeper thing there. But there were a ton of movies that came out. Hanu Man starred in the box office. Um, you had the mon uh, bad monkey with Vince Vaughn. Former President Barack Obama keeps a little Lord Hanuman statuette in his pocket as one of his little tokens. So that was something that tied this all in. That is but, so wild. So wild. But then there was also this, there was a, a few other things that I found, but there was also this vi viral song that coincidentally was going out. And it was, it was a guy named Hanuman. And it was like, have you heard of him? No. Mm -mm. I, I don't mean, listen yeah. to that kind of music, but... <laughs> <laughs> it was, um, it was, his name was Hanu man and he had a viral song coincidentally right at the same time as all this happened. And it was ha Hanu man kind was his name and a song. It was a viral song, um, on the billboards, um, kingdom of the planet of apes came out, um, monkey King, a China video game, monkey all of this King, stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Monkey Man came out. It was another mm. movie this year. Mm. I mean, you guys, it's it's wild because you're like, yeah. why? What is right. why? Oh, well, you know? Yeah. yeah why and, and, and there is no really convincing um people in this way, it seems. Maybe this is my <clears throat> fatigue and pessimism coming up, but just like like you know. I just find it hard the way I see people interacting with the truth or not interacting with the truth today. It's just hard for people to be convinced this way rather than for them to just be able to witness it yeah, and have, have, it. Have, yeah. have veils removed from their eyes regarding these things. Um, because it's like the things that you're bringing up, the only reason somebody would even look or pay attention is because they want to ask questions. Mm -hmm. And the biggest apprehension or the biggest programming that exists on citizens today is a lack of desire to ask questions. Yeah. I think a pacify yeah, people. Pa you pacify yeah. them. Right. I was looking right. at your page as you were talking and you have some stuff that I want to share on there really quickly. <laughs> um, that's it, based on what you were just talking about. I mean, you have Kamala inspired by the lotus flower. I pet go. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, so that's the book. Okay, so well, no, this the no, book. No, that's the oh yeah. What's that about? That's a movie or something like that, isn't it? Yes. So the iPad Go and iPad Go Two was a movie that this guy made. I don't remember the year he made it, but it is wild. It is it so. Is. It has so much symbolism in it, and it's just kind of uncanny how it all ties together with this stuff that's going on. I remember because there was like a cartoonish Barack in that thing, right? Yes, and George Bush, yeah. That's right. Mm. Yeah, That's yep. right. I remember that. 
Yeah. I wonder if that's findable now. <laughs> a new trend on TikTok, sticking your tongue out for pictures. I, yeah, I think that when you take a step back, oh, look at that. Mm-hmm. Oh, you got to love it. Wow. Mm. You got to love it. Look at that. Yeah. Newsweek. Yeah. Wow. Right. That's in New York. Yeah. In that was several time. years ago, but. That's right. Mm-hmm. Interesting. Oh, yeah, I bet. Yeah. Oh, goodness. Yeah. That's spooky. <laughs> yeah, that's spooky. I hate right? that. Yeah, that's spooky. I can't I'm always so astonished at how bold they are. Well, yeah. Because, yeah. um, mm-hmm. I mean, I guess it used to be, it, it, it <coughs> used to feel like it was they were hiding or kind of covert, but now it just feels yeah. like a lot more blatant. Oh, yeah. Well, and maybe I don't know if it's because we are just aware. I think it's dual. I think it's because we are aware, but also um, the moral threshold yeah. has thinned yeah, for sure. significantly. Totally. Uh, I was just in a, a, a book group with some believers talking about this where um, we have been so uh, desensitized and jammed. And so we've become apathetic towards evil and we've been jammed to say that if you speak out against evil, you're going to be likened to groups that everybody collectively believes is evil. So you better not speak out against evil. So that we've acquiesced. We've acquiesced to the point where we're we're okay with words being sanitized. I think Vodi Baca makes a great case on homosexuality, that being changed from sodomy. Uh, we do it even with euphemisms like abortion. Abortion is murder. It's killing a child. Uh, <laughs> sanitized child, call it a fetus. It's like, why are you using Latin all of a sudden? That's ridiculous. Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's it's killing a child. Yeah. Um and, and 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 over time, incrementally, while we give up these small concessions on a daily basis, 10 years down the line, we're willing to let men go into girls' bathrooms. Right. Oh, right. Well, it's like where sin is tolerated, decay will will come, you know, yeah. and it's like the more we tolerate it, the more, you know, we allow it. And it just it comes and decays. It rots. I read this quote. Let me see if I saved it. I typically have a habit of saving things that I like. Um, oh, here we go. Let me see. This is Dwight Longnecker. First, we overlook evil. Then we permit evil. Then we legalize evil. Then we promote evil. Then we celebrate evil. Then we persecute those who still call it evil. Hmm. Right? Right. That's where we are. And so it's mm. only a matter of time, I guess, to figure out or see other things kind of unfold in what you were just sharing with us regarding the whole monkey thing and Hindu and mm-hmm. Lotus and Civil War. Um, so how do you stay grounded when you're looking into all these things? Um, and obviously, the deeper you dig, the more credible it seems. It's hard. How do you stay grounded yeah. with all that? Yeah. Um, the Lord, you know, um, there was a time when I was, and I, I teach Bible studies. I'm also a counselor. So like, I have to practice what I preach, right? Like Mm. I can't be saying all this stuff and then going nutso behind the screen. So I, there was a time when I found myself kind of swinging a little far to one side, I was imbalanced and it was almost insatiable. I wanted more. I wanted to understand. And I found myself like really getting affected and you know, I was convicted. I was like, oh my gosh, like I need to stop. Like it, it's this constant quest for knowledge, right? Mm. Always seeking, but never really yeah, never arriving to the, to the truth. Mm. Yeah. And, and I know the truth, but it's like, you know, it's like, and I find that with people today too, just as a sidebar, it's like, you see that online. It's just this insatiable want for more. And, and really what that want is, is a, that whole of Christ, right? Like yeah. that's the want that they're looking for, but they can't find it. Okay, and it. yeah. And so for me, I just kind of, you know, praise God, I, we have the Holy spirit to convict us. And I just pulled back and, and just started to balance, but you know, the Lord has given me a pretty big threshold for things like this. Um, mm. You know, even in my own counseling, I, I work with people who've been through satanic ritual abuse, extreme mm-hmm. abuse, and I have such a heart for them and I can empathize with them, but I don't carry that as part of my identity when I walk away. So yeah. God has given me that ability through Christ to just 
lay it at the cross, you know? Yeah, um, yeah. and, and so with this stuff, it's, it's a lot, but I know, I know who's sitting on the throne. Mm, I know, yeah. you know, and you guys do too. So it's yeah. like, yeah. So. Yeah. Wow. It. Yeah. Praise mm -hmm. God for that. Mm. Praise God for that. <clears throat> Final question for you to share. Oh, were yeah. you about to say something there? Yeah. I was going to say the, the contrary is, um, like you brought up Alex Jones, right? I don't, I don't know his faith. But he professes on, to be Christian, yeah, but it doesn't seem based yeah. on his, you know, reactions and how how heavy he carries some of this stuff. Yeah. Um, it's hopeless. Like, what do you? What does a person who's hopeless do with this kind of information? Exactly. Yeah, I don't know. I I agree with you. I actually just saw this one just video spiral. Though. I saw this. Ju I just saw this one video of him talking about the core of his, you know, mm -hmm. Alex Jones. Nation, idiot. <laughs> but uh, and he was talking about seeing the evil all around and knowing who the King of Kings is, mm -hmm. and just wanting to be that guy that says, "Put me in. I want to play. I want to. I want to fight for you. Put me in." Mm -hmm. And when I was watching that, I gotta say, I got a little jacked while I was watching it. I mean, because I'm like, wow, that is a that is an Isaiah esque. Mm -hmm. mentality here send send me yeah, send yeah me. i will go i'll yeah. go mm -hmm. and so i'm like wow i've never seen that side of an yeah, Jones. Never, yeah okay i've never me seen neither. that i can get behind that but yeah. but but other than that yes i'm, I'm with yeah. you and <laughs> i i pray yeah because i because I, I think that they'll there are only two places you can go speaking of documentaries the probably the third more refined 9-11 documentary i saw when you know as time moved by and technology advanced uh we shared with our podcast a, few, a couple of years ago was a gentleman who was an atheist mm -hmm. began diving into 911 because there were questions and it was more questions more questions and he did that swing like what you're talking about this insatiable search for knowledge now unfortunately in that search he found a lot of evil and mm -hmm. it left him in despair but then that led him to the cross mm -hmm. it led him to Christ and he shares that. Um, That's awesome. And so for people, there are only two options where um, they will either be led in despair mm -hmm. when they search these things because it's reality. Evil is a reality. Or they'll be led to, cro to the cross. Yeah. And I'm grateful for podcasts and pages like you Aww. who unfortunately, who, who else is going to talk about yeah. evil but the church? I yeah, know. Who else right? is going to do it? So yeah. There are people who see what you see and they don't know why they're seeing it. And I'm grateful that you get to tell them. Mm -hmm. I'm grateful that you get to tell them the answer and the cure and that the battle we're fighting right now is a battle we've won already. Yeah. So we can do it with joy. Thank you. With joy. Yeah, it's true. I mean, <laughs> it's a, it's a tough road. And, you know, I always encourage people, mm -hmm. if you're finding yourself getting to that space where you're just like freaked out, you're fearful, mm -hmm. you have anxiety, take a step back and, yeah. and, and go back to basics, get yourself back in the word. You know, you, you gotta, you gotta find your rest and your peace in him. Mm -hmm. And then he will send you out as, as he, as he sees fit, you know, yeah. at his timing, his pace. And I had to learn that, you know, I had to learn mm -hmm. that. So, yeah. yeah, this was going to be my last question and then we'll close. Yeah. If you, what okay. would you say to people about Hollywood? I'm reading this book called Hollywood Babylon. Oh, um, what Sounds would you good. say to people that Hollywood is a entertainment art industry that has evil in it, that Hollywood is evil or your own option hmm. that you would like to choose? What would you say? Oh, man. So Hollywood is entertainment, A, or B, Hollywood is evil, has evil in it, or C. Yeah. Yeah, My so a, a would be Hollywood is ultimately it's entertainment. But yeah, there's some evil stuff that happens in Hollywood. Or B, no, Hollywood is actually evil. That's the goal of it. Its its goal is to do evil. Or C, you fill in the blank, however you like. <laughs> Think outside the box. <laughs> um, I'm going to go with C. Okay. And I'm going to add on to what you're saying because, you know, you think about acting in and of itself. Acting is inauthentic. It's being somebody else. It's being deceptive, if you think mm -hmm. about it. Mm -hmm. um, it's tricking your, your audience to believe something that you want to sell them. 
And mm -hmm. when you start to look into the facets of Hollywood, that there's a CIA office in Hollywood, that it's an <laughs> extra arm of the, of the three letter agencies that, you know, the Hollywood was kind of this magic um, idea of the mm -hmm. wand, this Hollywood, you know, yeah. there's so many different facets that play into it. And, um, and so, yes, it's entertainment, but at what cost? Mm -hmm. It's entertaining you, but what is that entertainment? Is it, yeah. is it selling, you know, your soul <laughs> kind mm. of thing? Because you're just so enamored with that lifestyle and, you know, the stars, right? Yeah. But, and, um, and so, yeah, I do believe it's diabolical. I believe it's deceiving. I believe that they're propped up as idols to sway the masses to, you know, follow along. And yeah. I believe that they, they're going to play a major role in these end days to sway people to a certain liking of a certain person or people who they need to follow. Mm, and yeah. so if people are, you know, <laughs> and that was one of the reasons why I did my page too, because I was like, you know, drop the idols. That's right. We don't need them. They're that's not, right. they're not, a, they're not somebody we should be looking up to. No, yeah. no. You know, that's yeah. an interesting thing. The fact that Hollywood, I mean, what they're stars. Yeah. Why stars? Yeah. yeah. We don't think about these things, right? Yeah. It's only on this side. It's only <laughs> when we get on this side that we start thinking about these things. Why are they called stars? Yeah. <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah. What's that about Alistair? Um, okay. Well, Amy, thank you. Yeah. Thank Aww. you for spending your time. Hopefully, we the, dive back in. Yeah, I know. Dang it. Dive back into the rabbit <laughs> Dang holes, it. man. Three hour <laughs> documentaries. That's what it was. When we were younger, uh, we shared a room at my parents' house and we would just sit. This was early days of YouTube. <laughs> we would sit and just watch raw footage of like different. So, 9 11 was one of the first. I think that was the beginning. Yeah, that of it. was the beginning for sure. Wow. Um, and then. And then Sandy Hook really kind of uh, mm. fitted us for our conspiracy theorist hats. Because <laughs> yeah. the uh, raw footage that was coming out over Sandy Hook was just mm. uncanny. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Uncanny. Wow. That's that's wild. And then, you know, your next rabbit hole that you guys can talk about is going down into the whole, you know, sub projects of MK Ultra mind control and how that yeah. plays into all the school shootings and stuff, too. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we've, yeah, we've, we've, Woo, yeah, guys. It's, it's, it's and all and all the it's movies that contribute to that. That's right. It's a lot, a lot of priming for MK Ultra. Man. That's right. Yeah. So, <clears throat> but hey, next time we're crazy. The board. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, we're the ones that's crazy. But Amy, we know, <laughs> we know the truth. Yeah, the that's truth right. is, though evil exists, exists temporarily, exists temporarily, and we worship the Lord because we once contributed to it, mm. and we've been called out of it. To declare the glorious excellencies of that who has called us from darkness to his marvelous light. Amen. These are the days to be alive. We'll probably be in it heaven is, telling, you know, David's going to be like, what was it like in the end time? You know, know. Abraham. That's, that That's is wild. an exciting thought. I had right? never thought about that. I've always thought about going to David and be like, bro, how tall was Goliath? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I mean, like, did you like flick your wrist? I mean, how, I mean, like, in the how world, hard did you go that route? How hard did you slit that thing? Right? <laughs>